Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, welcome to another week of wonderful programming. I'm Alex, and this is the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Lori Thompson right there. Hey, hey, Hello. Lori, how you doing, Lori? Hola. Uh, Lori Thompson Everybody. used to be the newswoman on my show, and I would say that she was the second star of the show or something. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Well, there was, yeah. a, there was well, a point at which uh, they, uh, I said to the, because I could demand anything and management would, could. Go, you lo, would go along with it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I could do that, and I would do that. Uh, and one of the things I demanded at one point, I think when we re-signed contracts and things like that, I said, I want it written in my contract that the billing on the show has to be Alex Bennett with Lori Thompson. Right, the with. Yes, and it said so on the bu the bus boards, too. Yeah, with and, Lori Thompson. And, yeah, and I, I, I appreciated that. Boy, anytime you know. they did advertising for the show, they had to put down Alex Bennett with Lori Thompson. Yeah, I like that. I appreciated that heartily. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, I for my mother for Mother's Day or something, we were uh, on the bus boards on the Muni buses, and so it can't. Of course, I waited till the last minute to get her Mother's Day present in the mail, and so I was able to. I think texting had gotten where you could text an image. Mm. So, <laughs> I right after the show, I had to get the Quay take me to the Muni bus like terminal the big yard yeah, where they keep all yeah. the muni buses and i couldn't get in so i had to climb up on a muni bus to get a picture of this alex bennett with Lori thompson oddly, it was a nice sunny logo oddly enough there's something strange like i had this one poster they had with my face coming through the poster or something That'd and it was cool. it was on every billboard in town <laughs> and and uh, people always said to me, "How do you feel about going around town and seeing your face on it on every billboard you see?" And I went, "You know, I just don't look at them anymore. You know, I stopped looking at them." But here's the thing: every time they did a big advertising blitz on us, like billboards or whatever, the ratings mm -hmm. went down. That is weird, and that's. And, so you, odd. So yeah, because the reason yeah. you advertise to get the ratings to go up, the ratings would go down. And finally, I got to a point where I said, no advertising campaign. No. <laughs> Let's save our money, put it in a pool, have a party. I never could yeah. figure that one out. But the next well, rating book that would come out, our numbers were down. And well, there was such an antiquated system for doing ratings. They would well, send a diary or a journal to your house. Yeah, and you had to fill it out for, yeah, for like, a week. Like you walked around with it every moment oh, yeah, of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got to do this accurate. What happened yeah. was you do it accurately for the first day, maybe the first yeah. evening. Okay. Yeah, the novelty of it. And then about Thursday, you go, oh, damn it, I've forgotten to fill this thing out. And then you right. would fill it out. And what would you put down? You would put down the station you listened to the most often. Not yes. the one you were listening to, which might have no. been me. You might put down... KGO, which always won the ratings because, mm -hmm. well, the rest of the day you listen to KGO. But you didn't remember that you listen to Alex Bennett in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so and, and the, yeah, the, and the, the but, way but you then they it came out, out the, the, Yeah, then they came out with people meters. Yeah, which means that the, uh, the technology did yeah. it and you didn't have to rely well, on it. Well, you had to wear this, you had to wear this like pager device. Mm -hmm. And what it would do is radio stations were then giving out with a signal that had its name. Mm -hmm. So when you would listen to that station, your pager would go, oh, KGO, oh, Live 105, oh, you know, porn. It was a much more accurate system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was a lot more accurate. And I think, I have a theory that when you're filling anything out, whether it's a loan application or something very innocuous, like you know, you're buying something at at um, 
a sporting goods store and you're filling something out, you want to be perceived on paper as this cool cat. So you kind of think about what the zeitgeist is for the cool cat that you want to be yeah. and fill things out that but, way. But, but, but the filling out thing was totally inaccurate, you know. It was and, and so they came out with the with the people meters, and all of a sudden, the KGO, which had been the number one station for, I think, almost 20 years, mm -hmm. okay? That's a lot of rating books, folks. They did four rating books a year, and, mm -hmm. you know, the rating books came out, uh, uh, I think they finally came out every month, but they, they were, they, a lot, for 20 years, they came out number one. The minute the people meters came out, they immediately dropped to 10th. Yeah, isn't that wild? But they've been in the market so long that those call letters were familiar to people. So if they were like filling these out, filling these out, and they were just getting tired and wanted to finish and go to lunch, mm -hmm. then they would put whatever was familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. so those old, you know, those old reliables like yeah. KGO. So anyway, anyway, they literally were not number one anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think the number one station in San Francisco. You know, what do you think is the number one station in San Francisco right now? I will say because of workplace listening, K O I T. Nope. 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 Uh, K well, oh no 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 the K C B S. You're never gonna get it. I'll give you a clue. What happened was at a certain point, uh, there was a point at which um, non-commercial stations were not listed in the ratings. Oh, and yeah. all of a sudden they did. The number one station, radio station in San Francisco is KQED. That doesn't surprise me at all. Because when I'm in a, um, wherever I am, I always tune first. And that's, to by the way, that, folks, that's the, that's the PBS station, radio yes. station in San Francisco. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me because all those shows, I mean, they have go-tos within a go-to. You've got NPR, which pe which represents a certain kind of mindset. And then within the NPR selections, you have like Fresh Air, with yeah. Terry Gross, all kinds of... Um, By the way, I've all, people often went, Terry Gross, what a great interviewer. Yeah. And I listened to her as a person who interviews, and I think I was a pretty damn good interviewer. You were. I was there. I was objective. You were. Yeah. Uh, and I listened to Terry Gross and I went, what's so great about her as an interviewer? The fact that well, she doesn't raise her voice? You know, I mean. <laughs> She's pretty mellow, mellow. I mean, I know you people are going to write me and you're going to say, oh, Terry Gross is wonderful. Is she still alive? Oh, yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. Um, and yeah, and she, uh, she has a new co-host. Uh, Tanya Mosley, I think her name is, but that does some of the interviews. And Fresh Air has become very creative at repackaging parts of interviews done by other people. They've got they've got like a roster. Uh, they've got a uh, what is it? A broad bench of people that also do shorter interviews, and then they repackage them with other shorter wow. interviews. Wow! Wow! Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so, so KQED is is the number one station in San Francisco. That, yeah, that that is totally. And I think yeah. maybe maybe in the last rating they were number two, and KOIT was number one. Yeah. Well, I found somebody was listening to KOIT. What does KOIT play? play? What do they play? Uh, mellow yacht rock, yacht rock, basically. Yacht rock. They call it yacht rock. Yeah, which is uh, mellow. Um, music that wouldn't get you arrested or wouldn't get you thrown in. Yacht the rock? That's what they call Yacht it? Rock. Yacht rock? Man, yeah. I've been out like, of this business too long. Yeah, it started. In fact, there is a band, a live band, that does yacht rock versions of songs, and they're a very successful touring So band. is it like, is it like, uh, my father used to refer to, you know, good music. Remember the good music stations? They, yeah, they the American they, classics. Uh, Andre Castellanitz and uh, people <laughs> like that. And and my father used to refer to it as flapjack music. Like pancakes? Yeah, flapjack music. Because there was a show on radio, and he I think he had played it on one or two occasions because he was a violinist, that was called the Albers Flapjack Hour. 
and they would play <laughs> that kind of music. So my father always used to refer to it as flapjack music. Okay. That's like, and there um some well-established uh, bluegrass so, shows, so, you know, there's, yeah. NPR has so many niches within their niche. Oh, yeah. Niche. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, I just, I, uh, 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 but that, uh, they're number one, so, you know. But but <laughs> it took going to people meters to make that happen, oh, which yeah. is probably, yeah. probably has its problems, too, you know, but I, you know. Well, like you leave your you leave your pager at home and whatever the dog listens to, you know. <laughs> that's who, that's how you're represented throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just all about t- keeping the technology uh, current with mm-hmm. people's habits. You know, people's habits can change the cycling of people's habits. It's much faster. Yeah, yeah. And because of just the world we live in right now. How's your radio yeah. career going? You're doing that show once a week or I something? I am. I'm doing a Sunday shift on a on a classic rock station. But she's not and getting so, paid for it because she has to go out and sell her own time. Right. Which I don't I do not like to be nice to people just because I want them to part with money. And that's it's like there are so many there are a lot of nice people that you encounter when you're doing sales especially in a small market and yet um if you don't it, it, i mean it, it just if you have a moment like that when you're having a bad day anyway mm-hmm. and you're dealing with a butthead and here's somebody that you wouldn't even stand next to at a watering hole and yet they're giving you crap and you're pretending to listen just because you want them to part with their money yeah I, just, I never could sell time never I, I did real well at it, but because um, I just basically well, because you're outgoing, you're outgoing. You can you, you can start up a conversation with a rock, you know. Right. I mean, right. well, small town heartland. USA. Yeah, but me, <laughs> the only time I can talk to anybody is when I'm doing this. You really? Know, if I'm at a party or something, I'm just completely shy. You know me. I I was well, yeah. always very shy. Well, that's what I always thought that we were a good team at parties because we we essentially double teamed it. You know, I mean, we were we could approach a conversation, the both of us, and then yeah. together we would form the perfect conversationalist. Well, we and had so, a guy we were working with named Ed Cramp, and he was the general yes, manager of, of Live yeah. One Hundred Five originally when I was there the yes. first time before I was fired and left and went to Florida and then came back and, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, uh, Ed Cramp um, was the kind of guy who was the best salesman in the world. He could just yeah. he'd walk in the front door of any business and come out after being in there for five minutes with money. You know, yeah. he just knew how to do that. Uh, that. The idea of making a cold call, as they called it, for me, I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Really, now cold calls would be cake for me, but it's just when it comes to asking people to part with their money. I don't, I, I just can't. It just goes against everything that I was raised Really? With, well, that's just, that's just selling, though. I mean, if you were sitting there at a candy store and somebody comes in wants a candy bar, you send, sell them a candy bar, they hand you money. They, you know, you could do that, couldn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it, if I had somebody that could just come in and close. Well, then, I just, then then you have to think that you're going in to sell candy bars. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't feel guilt about it. Yeah. I just felt an annoyance with it, you know, that, yeah. that it would cause that change in me just for monetary purposes. It was not what I wanted to be. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, yeah. Plus, I, I just had so much fun. Uh, being on the air to me was like, going to a party every day with a bunch of your best friends and you get to hang out. Yeah, well, we, uh, we, I, you know, I, I worked on false pretenses. I mean, I made, I, I said it once and the general manager said, well, I'll be happy not to pay. I said, I would do this for free. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I proved that I would do it for free when I first went to Sirius XM. The way yeah. I got in there, as I said, they said, we can't afford to bring anybody on right now because they were just starting up. And I said, okay, uh, how about this? What if I told you I'll work for nothing? All you got to do is let me own the uh, inventory. 
the advertising inventory on the show. Oh, wow, yeah. And they said, okay, because we want you, you know, but if you want to do it that way. Well, within three months, they offered me a full time. They offered me a job. They said, we, we can't stand not paying you. Yeah. But, but it was a way of that. getting in the front door. And for like about three, four months at, at Sirius XM, I worked for free. And, yeah. and I proved my point. I would do this for nothing. Yeah. I mean, there were times, Ben, when we were working in San Francisco, and I would just be having so much fun. It was just, we'd be on a roll. And it'd be like, I can't believe that I get to do this for a job. Oh no, I, the, I've never, I've never worked a day in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, right? I mean, I've done radio shows, but I've never worked a day in my life. That's that's and, because you found something and, that you're good at, yeah. and you love. But yeah, in, Sa was, in San, San Francisco was the most successful I've ever been. However, you know. I mean, I worked New York, but I'm the most successful I ever was was in San Francisco. Yeah, but you were a pretty big deal in New York because people would people still remember you when we would go and do the show from New York for a week. Yeah, people, you know, still. Yeah, you. but I didn't realize I was that big until I no longer wasn't on the air. You know, and then uh -huh. people, people started in retrospect. You know, people tend to remember things better than they were. Yeah, you well, know. they just leave out the boring parts. It's like editing. It's like a highlight reel. I mean, I remember they, they Alfred Hitchcock didn't release Vertigo for about 20 years after its original release because he owned the film. So he decided not oh. to release it. He let it, you know, get a reputation and so on and so forth. And finally, after his death, the family released the picture. And all of us who sat around going, that's the best picture, you know, best picture Hitchcock ever made. We then went to see it and went, well, it's good, but it's not as good as we remembered it. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, it's really good, but it's not that good. It's not like we had just idolized that. If this thing ever comes out, that's the greatest movie ever made or that, you know, uh, and, and that wasn't the case. Um, well, yeah, it just uh, showed you how much a role that hype and marketing plays into well um, it, it's I, also I, that you were like I, so i felt people remembered me in new york as being better than i ever was you know let's not tell them but when i be, went back to new york somebody said you should come back to new york because they remember you here and i went back yeah. to new york and i did okay with you know i got sirius xm and i had that for about almost 10 years you know uh -huh. which is a good run if you think about it Sure, you it know. sure is. Yeah, uh, but uh, I, I, so I that that's I came back here for exactly that reason, and people did remember. Oh, Alex Bennett, yeah, I remember you. Yeah. You know, over, well, and I'm going. You know, that was a long time ago, kid. And I get this from San Francisco. Oh, I love that show. That was the best show ever. And you know, come back to San Francisco, do it again. I try to tell people we can't do that again. That was lightning in a bottle. Yeah, it was just so perfect. The timing was perfect. Yeah, um, the combination, the chemistry was perfect, and uh, it was just everything great... aligned just right. You mm -hmm. know? Yes, and it took us a little while in San Francisco to get there because I started out at, at uh, KMEL, did a couple of years there, oh, and I forgot and, that. Yeah, and then I was hired by uh, the Quake, uh -huh. KQAK. Uh, and I, I was there, I think, maybe for two years. I think. I'm not sure. I can't remember the amount of time. And then I got let go from there because they were changing their format and it was bought up by new people. And they had, but they had to honor my contract. And then Ed Cramp came along and did a football kind of deal where, well, we'll pay half if you pay half. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they actually made a deal. Uh, they said we, we we'll pay, um, uh, we'll pay. What was it? Something like we'll pay sixty uh, percent. You pay forty percent, and if we he gets the same ratings that he got at the quake, uh, we won't owe you money anymore. We'll take the whole. We'll pay for the whole thing, and they in their smartness said. We don't like that deal. No, it's 50-50, and, uh, you know, we'll just keep paying until the contract's over with. 
And in the mm-hmm. first book, I beat the number that I had at the quake. <laughs> they would have been, <laughs> they would have been out of out of having to pay all this money. Well, yeah, the quake was a great idea. It was like eventually, it was like the format that a Flag 105 came to do. And yet it was underfunded, wasn't it? Like your checks would bounce. Everybody had to race to get to the bank first. Yes, because, it was terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. It was one of those, it was one of the things where, since I was the highest paid person there, I said, I will cash my check last. Very noble. You know? <laughs> Uh, because uh, I've already made enough money here, I, I'll, I'll, I'll pay my, my uh, do my check last. But what happened was, uh, the, uh, the way I got out of there with them owing me all that money, because they didn't want to have to pay me, but they had still a year and a half left on my contract. The quake, you mean? The, the quake. And they yeah. wanted to get rid of me, and, and so they held a meeting uh, among the lawyers right the suits and at this meeting somebody from the other side the side we were fighting said uh, in this meeting full of lawyers and he was a lawyer himself he said um, I hear Alex Bennett has a drinking problem what well I do, I, I, I yes guess. I do have a drinking problem I don't drink <laughs> <laughs> you know but I, what turned out was that because I never drank at parties, people all thought no, I was an alcoholic. Alcohol. They yeah. all assumed. Oh, they assumed. They assumed because, I was an alcoholic. Oh, okay. And the fact that he said this in a meeting full of lawyers is what's called secondary defamation. Really? In other words, no, it, I, secondary I defamation isn't where you say Alex Bennett's a drunk. Secondary defamation is where you say, I hear Alex Bennett has a drinking problem. Yeah, so you're crediting it with somebody else. Yeah. yeah. But uh, secondary yeah. defamation, and they said, you've just been found, you just, you, you've just been found guilty right here in this meeting of secondary defamation, and they caved and just said, we'll pay him not to work. Yeah, well, which is a nice gig. I had that for a, well, almost a year. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. It, because you miss doing something. No, it's not that and you miss doing something. It's even more of an insult when you realize it's worth it to them to pay That's you. In my case, uh, it was, uh, what was it, uh, about $300,000 a year not to course. work? I, In other uh, words, I we don't want to see you. Here's the money to stay away. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I, you know, I, that's Just insulting. shut your mouth and go that, to sleep. That's insulting, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was just nice not to an- have to answer to anybody. Because, I mean, when you think about it, when you're on the radio or in broadcasting or doing a podcast, mm-hmm. um, every word out of your mouth has to be thought about, you know, because it can be taken so many different ways. Well, I've often said that I was walking all the time when I did talk shows, especially, I was walking on a tightrope because I could say anything that I, I could say anything accidentally one moment and be out of work forever yes that's what's scary and i think it carries over into one's personal life like i tend to be overly diplomatic i mean before i say anything um you know it's it's an automatic filter now i would never say anything that knowingly hurt someone's feelings i mean not if there was someone i like you know but i think it's gotten well i always knew how to walk that uh, that fine line look I come to the cliff and look over and see the abyss, but not jump into it. And yeah. I, so as a result, I've never been sued. That's great. Yeah, you know, I considering what I've done all these years and what we did on that radio program in the morning, not getting sued was a pretty amazing feat on my part. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, I, would because just, I would take it right up to the edge. You know, very edgy, edgy, edgy. I'd look like over I the remember. edge, yeah. I'd be like the Tom Cruise of radio. I don't, uh, I, but I don't want to jump over that cliff. Tom mm-hmm. Cruise does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh, it is the, the politicization, politiz- politicization, politicization. Of, uh, every, yeah. You know, every word and it's everywhere. Um, has really changed the nature. And I have to be careful about what people said around me, like you. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you right, know. right. 
Because um, and that's why I always I, tried to know what the parameters were. But so I, if you said <laughs> something that I felt could get us in trouble, I would jump in and save the day. Mm, mm, yeah. Does my face and, look uh, too? Does my face look too orange? No. Oh, because no. I I, I, mean, I did it so you're I, trying to I, cultivate. No, I did it so it would look more orange, because with all the light coming in here, I was white and I looked pale. No, don't want to look pale. Mm. People think you're a zombie this time of year. Yes. Hey, listen. You know we have run out of time, dear. Well, Every time we we'll, do this, it's it's it, we probably should do five hours or something. Right. <laughs> but we have a lunch for you know a lunch for uh, craft services. We'd have to. Well, you and I are off. just real talkers, you know. So we and before you know it, you know, twenty five minutes is up. Thank well, let's you. Do it again. Will we see you next week, Laurie? Absolutely, babe. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. That's Laurie Thompson. Yay! 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 Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, get this. Uh, let me just, you know, Monday and on the first day of the week, I've got to do things to change this around so it uh it uh it's okay let me see here hold on a second let me just get this down there we go and this over a little and ah, there we go okay hello everybody how are you it's uh monday it's wednesday and there's only one person waiting to come on the program one person one person. Why do I do this anymore? You know, I, I, uh, uh, Albert's here visiting me, and he said, "I said I got to go do the show," and he said, "You're still doing that? You know, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to yourself?" And I go, "Well, because I, people call me and they want to talk to me," and and I go, uh, "Okay, so who wants to talk? To me? Let's see who wants to talk to me now." Oh, well, there are a couple of good people. You know, so I, I can't I can't really complain. Okay, here they come. Let me make sure it's the people I think it is. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Is it is it the people I think it is? Okay, they're the people that are supposed that it's supposed to be. Brian, and we don't have a pic. Oh, there we have a picture on you. Okay, let me uh, let me now move everybody onto the screen. Move your camera a little bit uh, there, Jeff, so we can see your full face. Just you yeah. know, just to, you don't you don't have to do anything technically. Just move the the yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Why do you give him a hard time? Geez, audio is working perfect, and he's still gonna bug him with his camera angle. Well, I, I you know I'm, I'm trying to just get him just to, I like to like get him to look beautiful because he's a handsome look looking good. he's a ham, ha, handsome handsome looking gent. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> who I had uh, lunch with the other day here in New York. He and his lovely wife Pamela came in and we uh, we had uh, we had lunch. Where did you guys go? We went up the street to a place that I we we tend to go to most you know you know how you have a restaurant in your neighborhood you usually always go to and yeah. it's called Venatura and we go to that and it it's it's good, isn't it? Uh Jeff? Yeah, very good. It's very, very good. And they think that your wife practically owns the place. Well, she acts like it. She acts like it. She acts <laughs> like it. You know. Like she owns the place. Yes, absolutely. So anyway, uh, uh, we're, you know, everything else is uh, the same as it has been. Uh, we still have troubles with the, with, the, uh, with the landlord and with the lease. And... Mm. Uh, my lawyer got a hold of them today, and they gave him some kind of feeble excuses that would never hold up in court. He said it was the most laughable call he had, and uh, so we got to have to wait until uh, uh, you know until these people come to a decision that they they you know somebody's going to have to tell them to do well. And my lawyer says, well, we might write our judge, you know, and ask him for help. Now I don't know if. He may be available in a couple of weeks, but you know, right now he's got other fish to fry, so that will take a while, okay? 
but uh, it's kind of kind of nice. I'm trying to get my watch here to to charge. Hmm. Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. So anyway, so we got that going on, and you know, and I'm always feeling lightheaded and tired. Did I did I look okay, uh, Jeff? Did I look uh, in good health? Yeah, I think so. To, to right now, you look great. Yeah, how but how how did I look in person? Well, do you fine? Oh, okay, fine. Same guy, right? He's well. He 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 asked, "How do I walk?" Oh yeah, because <laughs> oh yeah, both of us oldsters have problems walking. You guys both get those little electric carts. You guys can cruise around in, you know. Well, your yeah, wife went. Your wife, your wife went and got the car to get you guys, and I decided to walk home. So that was a good sign, wasn't it? Yeah, you walked home. That's right. Yeah, I walked home. Oh. So, you know, yeah. But, you know, it's just that we're, we're getting old, right, Jeff? We are. We're all getting old. Y yeah. We're yeah. not getting younger. Well, yeah. you're, you're not that old, my friend. What are you complaining about? You're a youngster. You're still working. That's the issue. Yeah, I think I'll be working for a while. Well, I, you know, I wish I were still working. You know, it, it working mm -hmm. it work is long. It, this may sound weird to say because a lot of people go, "Boy, can I wait till I hit sixty five and I can retire?" And I'm telling you, retirement is um, is not all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> uh, no, because you retire and then you get this kind of lethargic feeling, and you, it slowly starts making you die. You know. What do I do now? Is the, is the yeah. question. Yeah. Um, uh, pa Pamela doesn't work any longer, does she? Well, she doesn't. But a friend of hers has a a private, a little profit, non-profit product mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. and um, so she's she helps. She helps she's, with that. She does half of that stuff. That it's like, a friend's project. Is that like pro bono? Oh, it definitely is pro bono. Yeah, so she's not getting paid for it. It's a non-profit. It actually is legally a non-profit. Yeah. So, uh, but it takes a lot of effort. Oh, yeah. They, even a non-profit yeah. has to have a lawyer. Yeah, and they, they have to bring a cert, certain amount of money in there to because they mail stuff and they give information uh, Right. Stuff, and uh, it, it's basically a program to uh, teach young kids how to handle if one of your parents are dead, <laughs> die. Really? really? Yeah, because that's kind of what this girl's uh, when she was a child, mm -hmm. her brother died. Yeah. And uh, and her parents didn't know what the hell to do with it. They they try to ignore the whole thing. That's got to be rough. Yeah, you know that's got to be a rough one. Now I've never had kids, but I know that if I had a kid and the kid died, that would that would devastate me. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And particularly if nobody knows really what to do about it. Well, the the, the one thing I would say is. The most important thing is get over it. You know, don't, do not let it rule the rest of your life, especially if you have another kid. But don't let it rule your life. You know? Absolutely, you're making a good uh, strategy. Yeah. Uh, but, and I'm saying that because I've never had any kids, and I don't know what it's like to have kids. But I know that if something that tragic happened to me, I would say to myself, well, okay, the kid's not coming back. I've still got the other one. And I should all put all my effort and abilities to that kid, and not sit around mourning the other one forever because it's never coming back. No amount of mourning is going to make the kid come back. Yeah, I think it's the the, the strategy is to help youngsters. I'm talking about five, six, seven, eight year kids. Mm -hmm. So even even if the parents are very active, yeah. Uh, they have a special uh, book with pictures and stuff like that, how to 
mm-hmm. teach them the same kind of suggestion that you that you're recommending right now, but to turn turn it into a little magazine for yeah. for kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm I'm such a I'm such a great psychologist that if a person came to me and their kid had just died, I just my advice would be get over it. <laughs> That's you know. <laughs> You're such a nice guy. <laughs> you know, you know what do we, what do we, what do we say? You know, I mean, here we've got, uh, here we've got Brian. He's he's a guy who's become a father late in life. Yeah. You know, uh, usually you use like the twenties and sometimes into the thirties to have kids, and then you pretty well made your family, and then you you raise them. You know, but he, you wait, what, how old were you when uh, Adrian was born? 47? I don't know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Was that, a, was that a shock for you? <laughs> I mean, did you say to yourself, well, did you say to no, you, what do I do? You know? No, 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 because Tiffany had two already, mm-hmm. so I felt as comfortable as, as I was going to feel. Okay, but still, Tiffany had two. And, and she probably had him at a pretty young age, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very young. Yeah. So she was used to the whole process, and and you weren't. She had to teach for the ride. She had. <laughs> did she did she have to teach you? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it seems like like uh, Adrian's your kid, right? All your kid. Uh, and and that the bond between the two of you seems to be pretty damn good. I'm 55 or 56, something like that, right now. You don't know how old, wait a minute, you, you don't know how old you are. <laughs> yes, I don't keep track. No. So yeah, but you know, if something bad were to happen to her, I, I'd, I'd, you know, prison's okay for the you know next 10 years of my life. Yeah, yeah. No, it. it, it well, you know, Kevin, Kevin could feel the same way, right? I mean, something yeah. happened to his daughter. I mean, I'm sure he's like. Hey, you know, I, I've had a great life, and now it's time to settle a score. Pay back for what? He, pay back for what he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're assuming. Yeah, they, show, they show there's a there's a video of a they got a Seven Eleven or something, and there's a guy has the like the daughter by the ankle, and he's pulling her out, and the mom is just grabbing her from the other side and and chasing him, you know, at the same time. And it's like, yeah, man, if, if anything will happen like that, oh, man, it would, yeah. Yeah. No no thought about it. And it's really weird being uh, 500 miles away with that whole thing going on right now. It's it's weird. I, I worry about it every day. But what what's happening now? Well, it's just my daughter is now 500 miles away up in college. Oh, right. <clears throat> right. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just sitting here going, okay, what's going on today? And I'm constantly checking on her and. Well, I, the good news is she isn't Jewish. <laughs> no. And yeah, what's right. happening at colleges these days, not a good thing to be Jewish. You know? No. But I think she's okay in that in, in that aspect because it's a pretty, it's a, I, I would say, a liberal college. Yeah. Yeah. There's no issues up there, I don't think. Well, I mean, they, they were making a big deal about Cornell because some guy threatened somebody or sent, a, yeah, you know, well, an email or whatever. But that was one guy sending one email, and they make yeah. like the whole school has gone anti-Semitic. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm beginning to think I, I begin to worry. I mean, because I'm I'm a Jew, I still am. <laughs> uh, I'm an old Jew. You uh, can't change that. And there's nothing, just buy nothing to prevent people from knowing that I am. Um, you know, so, um, uh, but I just, you know, I just, I, I don't let it worry me a lot, but nevertheless, I mean, it's getting dangerous. No, because it's, they can do something that you have nothing to do with, and they just decide they're going to do something. That's what. That's what's Well, I'm about. sitting there watching my wife's favorite station with her, MSNBC, and they're doing this whole discussion about, do you think there's going to be more violence? Do you think the anti-Semitism is going to be happening more and more? And I'm saying to Mar- I look over at Marjorie and I go, well, it will be now. Yeah, if you just keep 
if you talking keep saying, about telling it everybody that it's going to be it, this way, you're going to make you're it happen. Inciting it exactly. Don't they understand this? Isn't there something they, you know, what are you going to say, Alan? No, no, I'll just finish what you're going to say. I, I, what I was going to say is they have uh, these kits for sixty nine dollars foreskin restoration, so you can make it look like you're not Jewish. I saw something like that online last week, but um. Got an email from a federal government agency, Federal Bureau of something or other, and uh, their warning of anti-Semitism in the United States, this is through a law enforcement thing, um, anti-Semitism and uh, racism against Muslim and blacks, actually. Well, is, is, is it that maybe we now take, uh, in this country, we take any excuse to be racist or anti-Semitic or so. to create that kind of violence? But I do you think, so. do you think the, all these people saying that it's getting that way and they, oh, they're, they're gearing up for people of the anti-Semitic problems and anti-Islamic uh, problems. And right. I'm going, if you just shut up about it, Yep. You know, you'll yep, admit, you have a you'll, million dollars worth of jewelry in your house and you tell nobody there's no probably very little chance it's going to get stolen. But if you announce it like on the air or something like that, there's a good chance when you go down to get food somewhere, you're going to come back and you'll be robbed of your million dollars of jewelry. Hey, Marjorie just bought uh, and I bought all these diamonds and they're at home and I'm here on the radio at the radio station uh, saying right. hi, you know, you know. But and for the right uh, but, amount, they can bribe me for your address. You know what I decided, though? I, I um, as you know, I can't stand Netanyahu. Uh, I, I think the man is just as dangerous as a lot of other people on this planet. Okay? Yeah. Especially because of the position he's in right now. Uh, and uh, he, um, he has been doing something the last couple of days. He's gone into you know, Gaza, and he's been attacking Gaza and rooting out the um, uh, Hamas, which, you know, we, we none of us are big Hamas fans. We don't like Hamas. Hamas is terrible. Right. Been terrible not only for Israel, but been terrible for their own people in, in Gaza. And the people now are suffering because of their decisions. Well, um, Netanyahu gets on the air and he goes, we just, uh, we just killed 12 members of Hamas. And I'm going, well, that's good. That's terrific. Because knew, we knew exactly where they were. Where were they? Well, they were under this building we demolished. How many people died in that demolished building? Oh, a couple of hundred. Wait a minute. To get 12 people, you had to kill 200 people? Are you out of your mind? Yes, he is. Yeah, and they say it with a straight face, too. I saw one of the interviews yesterday. It's like, am I really hearing what he's saying? That's like... Yeah. And, I'm, and, I, I mean, I'm pro-Israel. I'm anti-Netanyahu. I think it's a crime that he has cut off water, food, electricity, medical supplies, and stuff like that to the people there. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a horrible... And, and now these people are going to have to drink and cook with tainted water which will cause more well, sickness. Well, listen, there are a lot of people. There, there are people there who have cancer, who can't get their medicine. There Absolutely. are people there who are uh, uh, children there who have, like, oh. lost a leg, but they don't have the proper equipment to remove the leg, so they, they take it off while they, without any kind of anesthetic. They, they don't have light to do anything in the emergency room. And, the you know, we had, uh, we had Josh the other day saying on the show that, you know, that he was, uh, well, he felt that the, Hama the uh, Gazans brought this on themselves. I don't think so. The, the Hamas went in there and forced them, okay, to, to accept Hamas. And it wasn't, they didn't love Hamas. In fact, there were a lot of younger people who were fighting Hamas in Gaza. Is that what Josh Gaza. said? Hmm? I was on the show, too. I didn't, I, I, Josh was very pro-Israel. Israel has the right to defend themselves. I didn't hear him say they, we I think they have the right to defend themselves, and part of that defense is within your own borders, okay? You're not going to, they have, the uh, uh, Israel lost about, 1,400 people, I think that's the current estimate now. 
How many of the Palestinians lost in Gaza? Well, try se over seven thousand. It is not an it is not an equal. It's thing never going equal. On. Wars are messy. It's just it is just terrible. Well, I, on the other hand, I I also looked at Marjorie the other day, and I, Biden was giving some kind of speech about how we got to get money for Ukraine, which I agree with, and we got to get money for Israel, which I don't dispute, but. I wouldn't give them the money until they allow the Gazans to leave Gaza and to get medicine and to get help. But because so they, he, could, they, could, they could get all that instantly, release the hostages. Netanyahu said as soon as they release all the hostages, they'll get power, medical supplies, everything back. They on. should have it now. It's inhumane not to give that I, to them. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I'm, you know, I'm not standing up for Hamas. If you can get Hamas but in you some can't kind of get that kind of cooperation in a war. I mean, you're not going to get that kind of cooperation. Yeah. I'm no. sorry. And, and it happened in it happened in Russia and Ukraine and they tried to do the same thing and they didn't get it and it's not going to happen in Israel or in Gaza. It's well, not the Ukraine's happen. Actually, it's it, Ukraine is different in that it it's still war and it's still they bomb the shit out of everybody and look at all the people that got bombed over there. Absolutely. It's no different. But but uh, you don't hear about the Ukrainians bombing innocent people. Uh, they don't yeah. have the the equipment to do it. No, but they've been getting they bombed. Oh yeah, they've been getting yeah, bombed they, by the Russians. Oh yeah, the right. Russians are terrible. Well, but, it's the same thing. I mean, right. yeah, but what's all the I'm difference? saying, all I'm saying is, is the, the you want to get Hamas? Okay, I agree with that. You know, but if there was some surgical way you can do it, fine. But when it means that in order to get twelve Hamas people dead, at the risk of seven thousand people who are innocent civilians. That's an awfully high price to pay for those to get those twelve people, you know. But are those accurate numbers? I don't know. I don't I know who. Yeah, I, I tell you, it. I don't. I don't believe anybody anymore. I don't yeah, believe I don't. Netanyahu with his numbers. Like we got twelve people. Okay, prove it. Let's let's yeah. see the twelve people you got. And even if you got twelve people, is that worth the seven thousand you killed? You know. I mean, I, I don't mind Israel defending themselves within their borders with everything they've got. But to go in there and not know exactly where to find the enemy, they, they went and they were, where they, we killed a bunch of people yesterday, I think, Israel. They were totally innocent people. Saying that, well, it was in a building in which they said underneath the building were the tunnels. So they dem demolished the building. Well, I'm not sure that that's it, true. Well, that's what we're told, you know, and yeah, we're told by that that we're that we're told by fairly reliable sources. And and Israel goes, but we got twelve Hamas people. Well, fine, that's wonderful. But you know, it, look at the risk. Look at the human toll. The innocent people, the children, children. Okay, forget about the adults. Let's say they all will like Hamas and love Hamas. The kids. If if Russia attack, attacked the United States right now, the in 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 in, in the country right here, mm -hmm. would you be saying this about us not going in and reattacking them back in their country and killing people in in Moscow? No, you wouldn't. And and I think, I think the reason why is I would be I would be critical of. Okay, what I, I've said this before when we've been discussing this is that what's terrible is the overreaction. In other words, if you take a measured, intelligent reaction to something like that, rather than one that's simply out of uh, getting even, right, then I, I, would, I would go along with it. But I don't know how I would feel even if we were going to go hit Russia. I mean, am well, I going to... But have they not... Have they not waited over what two weeks to let people get out of there? They, they, they can't, have they not they, waited? They to, can't get out of there now. They can. Yeah, Today was the sure. first first day they well, could they, get but out. But they could have gone south. No, they went south, and they and, and, and yeah, there were Israel, people going south. Israel was bombing the south too. No, 
Yeah. I haven't heard that. I've heard you know, that I, one. I heard that too. I heard that too. The same, oh. maybe the same time Alex was listening because I saw the interview when they showed that big crater in that building that, that they bombed. And the guy with the straight face is saying, yeah, well, we're able to get a couple people that we needed and blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like saying it with a straight face. And then you see the video and they're taking babies out that are all like, you know, charcoal and, and showing all the bodies and everything. Yeah, I mean, but I, 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 I <clears throat> thought I was watching the first week or two before There's all that bombing was happening mm -hmm. when they were telling people to go. Yeah, and, and but, but people they, weren't going. They, they were, told Americans <clears throat> to get out. They were saying, "We're going to stay. We're going to stay." Well, That's those were those. Went, is that their own damn fault? Those or what? are when South couldn't get out. No, it's not true. Well, well, they couldn't, they couldn't get out. The so, South were they e not getting out of the border, but were they going south of the in the country? They were going south, but the South was also being bombed as well. I, I didn't see that back then. Yeah, right I'm after, not, the, right not, after not the then. seventh, not then. Right but after the, the seventh, they, but they were telling people get the other, hell there's out. There's one other horrible problem, and that is and there Hamas. Was two, there was two weeks that the tanks were sitting on the ground outside of Gaza, there were waiting lot, for yeah. people to move. Well, and nobody lot, was moving. There were a lot of people. Well, it, I'll explain that one in a second. But the people going south now, because the border is open, Egypt has opened up the uh, the border. Uh, uh, Hamas is bombing those people. Trying to kill their own people to keep them from leaving, and that's how horrible <laughs> and then they we are. Get, and then Israel's getting blamed for that. No, they too, don't I'm get sure. blamed for that. I heard today the report that Hamas was <clears throat> doing that. You know, it's a shit show. It's obviously. a shit show, absolute shit show. And the people, and they're going to be blaming each mess. other for this stuff all over the place. And, they, and you know, they're full of shit. You know, either one of them are. Yeah. When, when anybody may mention this thing about us versus Russia, they're pretty far away from us yeah well what, what but you, these two countries are that's, connected that's yeah. right they're physically within each other it's yes. like russia and ukraine yeah yes. yeah uh, and, but it, well it, if yeah. russia hit us we would retaliate without uh, even before the bomb made contact because it's such a distance it would be done with an icbm and we would of course, launch it'd be a totally um, different the mutual assurance thing. And so, but you would be behind it, Alex, I'm sure, if they, if they're going to kill a million people with the, with the nuclear tipped type CBM, and we're going to respond the same way. And that's why they don't do well, it. Well, to probably. begin with, we'd probably take it. If, we, if they sent one to us, we would probably shoot it out of the sky before it got to us. And if we, and if they sh we shot one at them, they'd do the same thing. I mean, we'd, and and that's kind of what you know been happening with with Hamas. You know, but one of the presidents, Bush or Reagan, came up with Star Wars, and a lot of the tests against ICBMs, they're much faster and a much higher in altitude uh, when they travel than the missiles that came went, went from was able to Israel. You know. It, those were a few thousand feet off the ground. Okay, These but are... now, first of all, first of all, you're talking in hypotheticals here. Right. Okay. Absolutely. But we, and, we and, well, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. You, you're talking about like... hypotheticals in that case. We're not talking about hypotheticals and what's happening in that part of the world. <clears throat> well, I and think when, if when, when, what, what, well, Biden told them, told Israel, be careful about what you do. You know, don't, uh, don't, don't absolutely. jump the gun here. And they did anyway. And my feeling is, we don't send them money till they back off and let people get medical supplies and get help. And where do they get the medical supplies if we don't send them money? Uh, the, there are there are trucks on the border that want to get in, <clears throat> and they're not yeah. getting in right now. They were don't, getting don't in. Don't forget for a about of days. what we did with Japan, right? Uh, what do we do with them? We you obliterated know, we, them. What atomic? Right, they attacked us. And we killed millions of people with two atomic bombs, didn't um, we? Well, here, here's, here's what happened there. And, and, and there's still a question as to whether it was the best thing to do or the wrong thing to do. I kind of side with those people that say it may have been the right thing to do. Because to begin with, Japan, the whole country, was armed. And the, the, almost everybody in the country who was an able-bodied man was a soldier. And, and there were a lot of American soldiers dying as a result. Uh, and if that war had been allowed to go on for another couple of months, 
a lot of Americans would have died. Yep. Uh, and they just felt that the difference between dropping that bomb, I mean, there was a, another reason why we dropped the bomb, but the main reason was it was going to solve a very horrible problem of them continuing the war. And when they didn't yep. give up after the first one, we simply dropped another one, and then they said, okay, we give up. All yeah, right? within days of the second bombing. Yeah. Uh, millions and but millions But again, of lives. you know, it's a di that's a different situation than this situation, you know. And it was a, that Pacific War, you know, you think about uh, the war in a in uh, Europe being a horrible war. The war in Asia was terrible. It was brutal. And so th this was a way to this was a way to bring it to an end. There was another reason I think why we dropped it as a warning to anybody else who would try the same thing that we now had this weaponry that if you tried to come get us and you tr and we wanted to stop you we got the equipment to do it with you know well of course, Russia has that capability now well Russia has that capability but they also have the capability of completely annihilating themselves by using it I you know it's it's it, it, there's something to be said about dropping those bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki that since then, an atom bomb, a nuclear device, has not been dropped on a human population anywhere in the world for over how many years? Seventy years. So, you know, we learned the lesson when we saw those things blow up on how horrible it can be. Now, the current, serious consequences. Yeah. 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 The, the current nuclear weapons are not like those nuclear weapons. They're much more low yield. But you know, radiation is radiation. Oh. You know. I I've, I've heard they're much higher yield, but uh, I don't know. It's not my not my forte. Yeah, but so. uh, I. Uh, I'm well, we've seen with things that happen like Chernobyl and things like that. Just yeah. small stuff. Those are small yeah. compared to a nuclear. Well, that was a, a bomb's going to do. That yeah. was a look out. Uh, that was a nuclear disaster in and of itself, but it wasn't right. a nuclear bomb that did it. Correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> now and think that, about what a that's bomb what would Kevin's do. pointing out. Yeah, exactly. The bomb is a lot more powerful than Fukushima or or these other an earthquake on the side of Japan. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. So I mean, it's you know, it's, it's, but I just I I just watch the news at night and I just get so depressed. I don't seeing, watch it at all, so I don't get depressed. Mm -hmm. I get so I don't depressed. Believe most of it. You know, hmm. I just don't believe it. You don't believe what that is happening, the or the news, the news? And I hate, like you do, when the cameraman, uh, you know, interviews somebody and gets a close up of them dying over their loved ones that have been taken <laughs> hostage or killed or something like that. Yeah, no, it's all I hate that. And so the way I avoid that is not to watch the news. Once a week, I'll catch up on it. Once a week. Or I come on this show and I hear <laughs> well, I from just hearing from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe what you watch on the internet. Yeah, well. Well, I don't think you can believe what you watch on the news. Good. And in the the only sources that they have in that part of the world is either the Palestinians or the Israelis, and you're not going to get the truth out of either of them. Well, there's a, there's a lot of uh, people from the UK that are that are uh, are uh, journalists that are there. They're kind of the neutral people and they are the good journalists there are yeah. some bad journalists they sent over there initially and, every, and everything there's bad well journalists. here's what they sent over initially they sent over everybody and they all went over there and they all realized this was their time to get it make it big with their network yeah. and so they were the ones that were shooting the people crying and zooming yep. in on their faces so we could see the tears you know I hated that. Yeah, and they did that because they knew when they got back home. Good job, Bob. You're promoted. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is. It, it, it's almost like they're doing an audition for the network. Uh, you know. Oh, yep. they, they send Lester Holt over to Israel. Like, he's going to help? No, he's going to report the news the way they see it. But he's not. Believe me, you're not going to get any information in Israel but what Israel wants you to hear. And you're not going to hear anything from the Palestinian side, but the stuff the Palestinians want you to hear. But, so so you don't know where news? you don't know where the truth lies. That's right. Kevin pointed that out earlier. 
It's what's been accurately described over the years as the fog of war. Yep. Yeah. And it just, oh, you know, brilliant. it just goes on and on and on. And I, I just, you know, and the, the part that bothers me, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew through and through. I will be a Jew till the day I die, and I will never deny it to anybody who asks me if I am. Uh, and I've been the subject of anti-Semitism in school when I was younger, growing up. Uh, yeah, I was called the dirty Jew. You know, a lot of things like that. But I never let it affect me. I never let it bitter me, embitter me, or make me think terribly of anybody else except the people who called me a dirty Jew. You know, just because they happened to be Catholics in the neighborhood I grew up in, I didn't think that was what all Catholics felt. And... Um, but I've been the subject of anti-Semitism, and I, I hate it. I hate, I hate it when there's any kind of ism, all right? Well, Judaism is fine. <laughs> but <laughs> any kind of isms. Uh, and uh, I, I just, you know, it just really bothers me that now I have this nation that is not acting in what I consider the good Jewish ways, you know? Um, the Jews are a very good, caring people who devote their lives to good works and good deeds. And I have to say that honestly because if you look at, like, uh, you know, uh, the, NAA, uh, the NAACP, who financed them for years? But Jewish groups, you know? They're always, they've always been there. ACLU, Jewish, you know? Uh, these were all good people. Uh, and I, I hate to have people think less of my people because of what a nation that has political aspirations is doing in my name. Right. And, and if you I mean, say, I, well, they're not I'm doing just, it in your name, what's that flag? That flag I, is I, in my name. What? Where did the Italians get the money to build Las Vegas? The Jews. So the Jews are not I, I don't think you're completely right on that one. Well, they got a lot of money from uh, from from the, from, the, from the mob. I, I'm talking about the mob got money from the Jew, from Jews. No, the mob didn't get money from Jews. The mob made their own money. Okay, they, they did. You know, in part, you're right. I mean, there were, were were Jewish aspects. I mean, Bugsy Siegel was Jewish. Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lansky was Jewish. Absolutely. Yeah, but that, that there were a lot of there were a lot of Jewish mobsters. Yeah, uh, of course. But um, the, the point I'm making is is that here's a nation that is a political entity, and and I've always that's why I've always been kind of questioning of the Jewish state, or at least the Jewish state calling it the Jewish state. If, if, you know, if they called it the Zionist state, hey, I got no problem with that. That's what they are. Okay. Means the same thing, but saying the Jewish state, anything politically that they do, like this reflects negatively upon me as a Jew. And then I have to deal with it here, you know. So uh, a, a lot of Jews are doing something Jews don't normally do. They, they're going out and buying guns. And they're taking classes on how to use those guns. So, you know, uh, there are a lot of Jews that are afraid in this country right now. And there are Palestinians who are afraid. What was the biggest Palestinian death in this country? That 12, what, 12 year old kid, nine year old kid? How old was he? Zaid or something. Yeah. Eight. Yeah, it's Eight. terrible. Just terrible. But, you know, we have an ability. We, if we have a great product in this country, if we have, you know, a big output of whatever, it's not cars, it's not TV sets or anything like that, it's, uh, it's racism, it's anti Semitism. And uh, that's that's the kind of life we lead in this country. It's terrible, you know. You and I can hide that we're Jewish walking down the street. Somebody that's black can't hide that they're black. Well, no, the, 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 I've often said blacks carry their identity wherever they go. Jews, yeah. uh, it's a little harder. It's a little harder, yeah. you know. Yeah. Not every Jew looks like a Jew should look. However, no. as we get older, we look more Jewish. <laughs> I think I look more Jewish than I've ever looked in my life. Jeff, do you feel that way? About I you. guess that's true. I, yeah. you know, 
It doesn't bother me. I don't think about it from that perspective. I haven't seen Jeff up close through you, Alex. If you both turn sideways and you got a ski slope for a nose, then I would agree. I know. Yeah. It, how big is it? Oh, uh, both. It? Neither one of you. Hmm? No, I don't think so, Alex. Your nose is pretty flat. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. I think so. How do you know. make that little hat stick on your head, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. How do I make that? Oh, you mean the little hat? We we, we yeah. stapled them. Oh, yeah. Staple it? Yeah. Doesn't wow. that hurt? Yeah. Who did I hear used to staple his? No, the hat's fine. Doesn't feel. You need like a yarmulke. That that really would make it more. Put it back. There you go. Who did I hear? I went to a Jewish wedding once, and they they made us all put them on. Yeah, cover yeah. my bald spot. That'd be great. I don't mind being. Yeah. Just... Well, that's why there, I, I used it to. Says think... stolen, uh, from Kabbalah. Bad joke, bad joke coming. Bad joke coming. Go yeah. ahead. What was the same? <laughs> No joke. Bum, 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 bum. A, a yarmulke from a synagogue, and it says that it was stolen from that synagogue. Really? Did it, all, it all say the money I give that synagogue that wasn't stolen? So I always thought they were. You know. Said it was stolen. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the camera. Will pick it up. I don't know if the camera will pick up the writing. It's actually there. Let's but. See. Oh. Wow. Stolen that, from? That's am, that's amazing to me. Why would they? It is. It says stolen. Yeah, it's like property of. You know? Right. Right. So they try to make them feel guilty. You know. Right. You, well, I, I, there there goes that. Police been stealing these. Jeez. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, uh, dissuading everybody from thinking Jews are cheap tonight. Right. Uh, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> well, the rabbi, the rabbi I gave it to me it because all. I supported his synagogue. So. I. And maybe I'm ignorant, but I don't remember any Jewish kids. Like there are Jewish kids in our school. I mean, Kevin, California. I mean, like in your area, do you? Did you? you I don't with remember Jew any either. I'm trying to think. No, I just I had a Jewish friend in high school that I hung around with every day. His yeah. family was Jewish. And, well, you know, uh, you know, they all they all joked about it all the time. But well, it was, I think it was, it was just I regular. Think it was Lenny you know, we all Bruce. messed around with each other, but it, it was never a big deal. I think, yeah, it, was big deal I think it was Lenny Bruce who said that California Jews are reformed. They are so reformed, they're Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> now, we had a lot of Nazis. No, I'm just he, was, he was from Maryland, so and he ended up going back there, but... He, He's a great guy. I hung around with him. Yeah, but you live in New family. York. You live in New York. It's a slightly different thing. You will see occasionally guys walking around who aren't, you know, aren't wearing the talus and all of that, you know, but they're wearing a yarmulke, you know, yeah. bus businessman. Yeah, yeah, every once in a while. I see once in a while, like once every six months, I see the guys with the hat and the curly hairs, the curly hair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my landlord, who, the landlord <laughs> who testified at the trial uh, wore a yarmulke. You know, you don't see that much here outside of the synagogue. <clears throat> no, Funniest thing was no going, California. We to... California is it was very relaxed that way. It wasn't you know it wasn't until I got to New York that I knew what being Jewish really was. You know, um, I grew up in California, thinking I wasn't that good looking. I wasn't that attractive. And the women kind of seem to agree with me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then I moved out across the country. I found <laughs> wound up in New York, and all of a sudden, I had all these women coming on to me. Yeah, that really uh, because in New business. York, I had a certain attractiveness because of my Jewishness that was terrific. It made me feel very confident, you know. Mm -hmm. Didn't make my wife happy. But uh, how, tall, how tall are we? How tall are you, Alex? You're you're not short, right? I'm, I'm only I'm six feet tall. Six. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So do you also have that going for you? I think, I think height has you can get a lot with height. Well, it was just that in California, if you were Jewish, it was kind of odd. You know, you you were uh, you were invited to dinner as an oddity to see if you would eat pork. <laughs> you know. Um, and um, uh, uh, growing up uh, in California, I mean, I went to Marin County. We had a temple, but it was in a house that they had bought. Oh. It wasn't really a temple. They finally added a little addition to it that made it look more like a temple. But I went there, 
and there were only something like 30 Jewish families in Marin County. Mm. You know, so we went, to, we, yeah. went, we went to Sunday school on Sunday. We should have gone on Saturday, but we went on Sunday. You know, and um, it was it was just you know it was a whole whole different vibe out in California. When I moved to New York, you know, I felt like I belonged. You know, and 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 uh, um, the only thing was is that in New York you have two different types of Jews. You have the Orthodox <laughs> Jews and the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. And the Orthodox Jews, uh, we're not too terribly fond of them, right, Jeff? They're hardcore. They're, uh, they're, they're mean. They're mean, yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my land. Now, I think we landlords. had uh, we had a group of them in our area in Burlingame. I think and there was a synagogue down there. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and they they, they would, you'd show up one day a week. All of a sudden, they'd appear and then go back wherever they came from but they were they were around yeah yeah it's interesting on this show four of us were raised in the bay area yeah well i was mm -hmm. i was uh, born and lived in new york for forever so so yeah. you're not one of the four of us that would be five no, of us. no. but i ryan, also ryan where were you born yeah who me yeah I was born in Redwood City. Oh, okay. I was, actually, I was born in Mills Hospital in <laughs> San Diego, and then moved to Redwood City. And then when I was 21, I moved to San Jose. Yeah, I was born in Children's Hospital in San Francisco. <laughs> I was too. No, I was born at Mary's Help in San Francisco. <laughs> I was born at Kaiser in Oakland. But what bothered me once is when I went back, back past Children's Hospital, where I was born, there were no bike racks. Now, wouldn't you think there'd be a bike rack at Children's Hospital? Right. Yeah. Well, how are they going to get there? Exactly. But uh, I think more. We're we're just talking about this. We we're doing the Halloween trick or treating, and we said that we used to do everything when we were kids. Mm -hmm. And now kids nowadays don't even get out of the house. Nope. Yeah, we were talking about. I had that four trick or treaters show up last night. Four. I used to ride my stingray. Well, from Marjorie Gates said to tonight, Francisco. and she, she was right, yeah. that the difference between when we were kids and did Halloween and when kids do Halloween today is all our candy were just separate pieces of candy. They yeah. weren't. And now you get knives and guns. Well, and no, no, no. Now, now, now parents will only take something that's been packaged and sealed. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. good. I mean, unfortunately, it's the times we live in. Yeah, yeah but what I'm saying, you used to bake stuff. You get cookies, and you used to get all that stuff. I you used to get. I used to get popcorn used to, balls. Pop, exactly, but they, apples they, with but, razor but, blades. But they weren't. Father. They weren't packaged. They were all separate. You'd put your hand in, grab a bunch of like that you, razor blade thing. I think there was probably one razor blade. I think it was in 1979. And it went around. And yeah. everybody thought, oh, everybody's putting razor blades and safety pins yeah, and everything. Probably. And there was probably only one of them. I, well, I remember one year getting very depressed that after doing trick or treat, I didn't get any razor blades. Yeah. I was looking yeah. forward to, to the razor Yeah, blades. you go in your room I don't, and start I didn't looking take for them. apples. You know, no, today, the, today parents it, we, will. We were when, supposed to not take apples. When the kids come home and they bring the candy, the parents. Unload the candy and make sure that it's all safe. Yeah. Except yeah. for the candy that you ate on the way home. Well, you know, it really, it, again, it really sucks because I go, this one's mine, this one's mine, it's not safe, it's not safe, those are all mine. That's a nice. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the thing is, they, uh, what do they say? Uh, that there was a, pr a problem with, uh, uh, there, was a, there was some uh, medicine that wound up tablets, drug oh. tablets. Wound up in some trick or treating bags, mm. and but they said like there was only one, but they showed the one pill. Now there that were could have just chewies been that showed up. But, well, that, there were medical marijuana chewies. Uh, there were a couple of things in. like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, saw something about. The, yeah, so the yeah. kid gets high. Big deal. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna get it eventually. So yeah. I mean, if you're, it, let's say Adrian came home with some candy from last night, okay? 
and let's say she ate it and it turned out that it actually was um, cannabis gummies or whatever and she got a little high would that bother you and like she calmed down and wasn't jumping around everywhere and dancing down the hallways. Yes, exactly. But she does that anyhow. I, I may I may prescribe a little <laughs> milder, but yeah, maybe. This was a ten milligram dose. I'm looking at the thing right now. And how big is it? I don't even know what ten milligrams. Uh, is. Ten milligrams of of uh, the active ingredient. Uh, uh, Ke tetra tetrahydrocabinol or something or other. Yeah. I don't know. It's a pretty big dose. My mother, my nephew left some candy laying on the counter. He lives with my mother. Yeah. <clears throat> and the candy contained five milligrams, and she ate two of them. And that night, she ended up in emergency. She didn't know what she mm. ate. And uh, that's pretty. Good. Well, I think the problem is when you get dosed and you don't know you've been dosed. Right. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You know. At close to 90 years old, it wasn't cute, and my nephew felt real bad. One, that he forgot his candy, and two, that his grandmother, who he lives with, ate yeah. the damn thing. Well, I get high every night just before I go to sleep. I take a... Uh... What is that? Alan, is that... Is that a, uh, what size is that? Turn it, uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Um, it, it's smaller than a bread box. Uh, well, that's, a, that's a capsule, but we don't know what is the that dose. Is that a capsule? I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah, but it, we, could, it could hold 10 milligrams or it could hold 1,000 milligrams. I yeah, don't know. Okay. Yeah. It's you, hard to tell. Is, right. that, okay. is that your THC? It's uh, it's the equivalent of uh, an aspirin. Well, I have pregabalin here, for instance. And the, these are the 50s, okay? But if I showed you the... Um, the um, what do you call it? The hundreds, they're not a bigger size. Uh, they, our pills no, what happens is they, they're a different color. These are uh, five milligrams of Tylenol and they're Norco, they're narcotic that's prescribed to me. Can we so, talk about Trump or something? Yeah, really, let's go back to Trump. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, everybody go get your medicine and we'll all put them up to the camera and we'll see. That's right. <laughs> I just love seeing the, uh, by the way, I love seeing the uh, courtroom drawings of oh, the yeah. Trump trial because it's always got a drawing of my judge, you oh. know, and I'm thinking he's having the time of his life right now. This has got to be the best thing that ever happened to him as a judge. I mean, how he drew the, I guess they just draw straws. And, and the winner gets to, you know, run the trial. But, man, he has just had the time of his life. He's got he's got this guy doing a comedy show in his courtroom. It's wonderful. Is that about Trump? He's doing kind of like the What was the judge's name? Uh, it was a little Asian guy with... Ito? With, uh, Ito. Uh, that's Edo. it. That's it. In Southern California with... with yeah, but, but you didn't have a situation in which... The guy who's on trial gets up and just walks out because he's mad because it isn't going the way it's supposed no, to. No, he go. wasn't going to walk out. He was being tried for murder. He would have had a hard time walking out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the only thing that Trump hasn't been tried for. So, you know, who knows? Give it, give it time. Oh, it's just, it, what a world we live in, huh? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's either a comedy or it's a tragic comedy. But either way, it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, you know, I just, I just every night I would turn on the news. I, I just can't watch it anymore. It just doesn't... yeah, the local news. It, I lost like three minutes on that because they were, you know, even with these big stories, then they just start talking about you know, and there was a murder here. They found some some body in a suitcase in Oakland. And then, you know, they start talking about that. And then there's something else going on. And it's just like nonstop. It's like, if I, when I don't watch this, I have no issue. But then when I watch it, it's like, what the hell's going on? Well, you know, as I say, Marjorie subscribes to this app called Citizen. And it tells you all the crime in your neighborhood at the moment. You know, stabbing. One, no, there's a stabbing a half a block away. All the reported crime in your neighborhood. Yeah. Well, if it's not reported, it won't show up. On well, I mean, you can start reading that stuff, mm -hmm. and after a while, you just 
scared for your life. I mean, uh, one day we went up to the, I think I told you the story, we went up to the bank, and she wanted to go in and get some money out so she could pay the uh, the cleaning lady on Saturday. And I said, I'll wait out here for you. She says, oh, no, come in. I need somebody to watch out for me. I said, what are you afraid of? He was afraid, afraid of? you were going to get attacked Th out there. This was the bank at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> the door was open to the bank. You know, are they going to think, are they going to come in and rob you at gunpoint? Why not? Well, those are good movies, you know? Well, I mean, just if you, if she gets this thing, every, and every hour it goes cling and there's another and, person. And if they rob the bank and rob the patrons, how are you going to protect her? You guys are going to comply with who's ever got the gun, get on the floor, and they usually don't take the, the people's money. They usually just take the bank. It takes too long to collect everybody's diamonds. Do they do bank robberies anymore, though? Oh, yeah, it happens. And not, not as often as they used to because most of the bank stuff is all digital, you know. They, they, they've had cameras since I was a kid in banks. And the FBI had access to it. They come in and investigate it along with the police department. And there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a video that I watched on YouTube. <laughs> Some guy goes in and robs the bank, and, and when they push the button, it turns the panic alarm on which is a silent alarm, notifies the police, and locks the, the double swinging glass doors. And the guy goes running into the door at you know full force, 90 miles an hour, and hits the door and knocks him out cold and he bounces back into the, into the bank. He, he wasn't any trouble finding. Yeah. It's always yeah. funny seeing something like that. And that's the world we live in. Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather have him if he comes in with a gun. I'd rather not have the doors locked. I like I like I like, I like Bonnie and Clyde. They were all right. analog, you know. Yeah, well, they were. Yeah, it took a long time to catch them because we didn't have digital stuff. Yeah, but uh, when they did catch them, they made sure they got them. <laughs> yeah, trial by lead. Supposedly, I, I, Bonnie Parker weighed 75 pounds more after they weighed her at the morgue. I bet. Yeah, because of all the bullets in her. Oh, uh, I bet. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, they they started shooting. They didn't stop shooting. No, nope, they didn't. They ambushed them and, and nailed them. Yeah. But these there were, was no arrest going to happen. These were dangerous people. Obviously. Yeah. You heard Dusty Street died last week or the week before, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 That sucks. Yeah, I didn't know her. Did not no, know I thought her. you did. No, I didn't. No, mm -hmm. no. But you know, there were certain people that were like legends in the Bay Area, but they were legends from a specific little place in time. It's kind of like yeah, me. Yeah. Kind of like me. And so sometimes you just never meet up with them because she was well known before. Yeah, the case I, ended. I started working in San Francisco again. You know. Yep. So there it is. It's more than Late 60s, early 70s. One of the yeah. famous ladies on the radio had the same last <clears throat> name as you. I well, thought maybe she, you ran into her over at Sirius because she worked a few of the different stations. Over there. Well, no, your, yeah, mother, yeah. your mother worked at the same station you did. I'm trying to remember, think if Dusty Street did work up, work, wind up working at uh, Sirius, but a lot of people worked at Sirius, but they were all over the country. You know, they were yeah, doing the shows yeah. from their home and things doing like their, that. Yeah. And I think she was doing her shows from a home in up northern California, maybe, or Probably Oregon. Marin somewhere, yeah. 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 So, anyway, hey, that's it. You know, uh, it's been another nice little hour with a bunch of people that I like. And that's the, be that's the, be that's the best way it can be. Mm. Not a big crowd, but enough of a crowd. Thanks, uh, Brian. I appreciate your in involvement in our program as well as Jeff's and it was good having lunch with you the other day we'll have to do that more often yep uh, and uh, um, uh, the rest of you guys from California can come out to New York and I'll take you out to lunch uh, thanks Kevin and thanks Alan thanks to all of you I'd say give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a wa big wave goodbye at you okay there they go folks that's our citizen panel for tonight uh, wow, that was a good one. Anyway, had a nice time. And we'll see you again. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection. That will be next over most of this same 
GabNet, okay? He'll be taking your calls on Skype, and it's uh, GabNet Live is the address to call. And we'll see you again tomorrow night, 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.